All right, welcome to episode one of the MD School podcast. If you are a musician or a worship leader or a producer, or you find yourself involved with a band or music in any way, maybe as an audio runner, I think this podcast could be for you. Here at the MD School, we believe in helping equip musicians and instrumentalists and singers. We help equip them to become music directors so that they can give their band tools and direction. I believe when you can give your bands tools and when you can give your bands direction, you will help have a you will help make a band that helps just maximize on the strength of your musicians. You'll help get the fullest potential out of them where you guys can be efficient and you guys can be effective and ultimately get the most out of them. We watched the Super Bowl just a few weeks ago, and I was reminded when watching the Super Bowl that a really good coach can make all of his players together be better than they are individually. He can maximize the strength of his players. And I think a music director, a good music director is the same way. It can help maximize the strengths of your band to make sure that your band is able to be the best that it possibly can be. So welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for taking a few moments to listen. If you're on YouTube, I would be really grateful if you would hit the subscribe button and the like button and maybe just comment below. Are you are you in a place where you do have a music director? Maybe you are a music director. And if you're on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts, I would love if you would follow along. Uh, leave us a rating and all that stuff. That'd be really helpful. Um, today, we're going to talk about the, the the things I like to think that we have to learn music. I think this is really important for us because a lot of times I get to meet people who um, learn music and frankly, they're not very efficient at it and they're not very effective at it, meaning they take a long time to learn music. And then when they spend a bunch of time on it, when they get to practice, they can't really remember what they practiced. And this was me. When I was in college, I remember spending hours and hours and hours learning three or four songs for a Sunday. And then I would get to practice or Sunday morning rehearsal and I would forget everything I learned. And so the week I have coming up would literally give me a panic attack when I was in college. I've got about 41 songs to learn over the next 10 days and I spread across five different events. And I'm actually playing different instruments at almost all of those events. I'm playing bass at a few events. I'm playing guitar at a few events. I'm playing piano at a few events. And at one of these events that is a retreat, I think I'm playing guitar and probably bringing an aux key set up with me too. I'll talk about why later because I think it's part of this video. But I'll be honest with you, I'm not that stressed out because I've learned how to learn music very efficiently and very effectively. We're going to talk about that here today. So I've got an iPad with me that's got some notes on it. And I think together um, we'll have a good time and we'll learn how to better learn music. All right. So when I have a lot of music to learn like this week or when I have music to learn in general, I think of it in three steps and they all start with P. So it's going to be easy to remember. I think about the planning stage. I think about the preparation stage, and then I think about the performance stage, whether that's you're leading worship at an event, and I know performance is a dirty word, but just hang on with me, or whether the performance is my other world, where I play drums in a wedding and event band. So I think about it, again, in three stages. I think about it in the planning stage, the performance stage, I'm sorry, the planning stage, the preparation stage, and the performance stage. So I'm going to walk us through that, kind of how I'm approaching it this week, give you some tips along the way, and hopefully you'll leave this podcast being a more effective and efficient music learner than you were before. So step one is planning, and I think it's critical. And I actually think this is probably the most critical step to learning music effectively. By effective, I mean you can remember what you did at home and take it with you to rehearsal. The planning stage looks like a couple of things. It looks like, one, legitimately putting time on my calendar but a plan together of when am I going to learn these songs? Is it going to be Monday? Is it going to be Tuesday? Is it going to be in the morning? Is it going to be in the evening? Is it going to be after my kids go to bed? There's all kinds of options, right? But sometimes I noticed in life, I would just kind of wait to find time. And that rarely ever works out. And when it does work out, my brain's not in a good space to learn the music. When I put the time on the calendar, it helps me just be really, really, really focused when it's time to learn the music. So step one of planning is just put time on the calendar. When are you going to learn these songs? Put it on your Google Calendar or whatever you use. I'm an avid digital calendar guy. And put an hour on there. Put two hours on there. Put multiple hours on there. If you're the type of person that knows you're not at the skill level yet where you can practice the day of or the day before and be okay, then put multiple short rehearsals on your schedule. So if rehearsal's on Wednesday, 
Maybe you should put 30 minutes on Saturday, 30 minutes on Sunday, 30 minutes on Monday, Tuesday. You get the idea and you'll be much more prepared. The other part of planning for me is to put the songs that I don't know at all, maybe they're brand new songs to me, in a Spotify playlist where I can just listen to them. And I know this sounds like preparation, but it's not. It's planning. Because I don't think I can accurately prepare for the song if I don't know the song at all. One of my rules in life is that I, and I I recommend this to people all the time, and I would recommend it to you. I do not even begin to learn the song, meaning I don't pick up my guitar, I don't grab my drumsticks, I don't sit down at the piano if I can't at least sing the chorus to you. If I can't sing the chorus of a new song to you, then I am not ready to learn the song. And so part of the Spotify playlist piece is it has me using time in the car, it has me using time washing dishes, um, listening to these songs, getting them into my brain, And just simply learning, and even that helps me plan what I even need to prepare. So, for instance, if I am listening to a song and it's got a ton of, I'm playing guitar, let's pretend I'm playing guitar, and it's got a ton of lead guitar parts all over it, I know I need to plan a lot of time to prepare because it's got a lot of lead parts. On the other side of that, if I'm listening to a brand new song, it's very piano driven and I'm playing electric guitar, I know I don't need to plan as much time because the song's not as intricate. So a vital part of planning to me is listening to the songs enough that I can sing the chorus to you, I can tell you the basic dynamic structure, feel, vibe of the song, and that will help me better plan how I need to prepare. One really practical example, I'm playing a retreat next weekend, a student retreat, and I am playing guitar. It's two, it's me and another guitar player. And he, he emailed me a few days ago and said, Hey, do you want to play lead? Do you want to play rhythm? How do you want to do each song? And I couldn't even answer him because I haven't planned how to prepare yet. So upon listening to the songs today, I I practice what I preach, had a Spotify playlist. I can show it to you. It's on my phone. I was listening to it and I realized something. Most of these songs need a second keyboard way more than they need a second guitar. Almost every song we're doing has some really important synth, synthetic hook. Um, Not a guitar hook, but some sort of synthetic hook. So I realized I bet I'd be a lot more beneficial to this event if I played a rhythm or auxiliary guitar role and played more of an auxiliary keys role. If I'd have jumped right into preparation... Um, I would have missed that totally. And ultimately, we would have missed what the songs need. So part of planning is getting time on the calendar. When are you going to prepare the songs? And it's also learning the songs enough to know what do I need to prepare? Do I need to prepare my instrument exactly as it is? Or do I need to prepare to pivot a little bit and learn something that I wasn't really expecting to learn, like maybe an aux keys roll, or maybe I'm playing drums And man, based on these songs, I need to whip out my brushes or based on these songs, I think it doesn't need a full drum kit. I need to use a shaker or something like that. Um, This step is critical to me because when we plan well, we're able to prepare in a much more efficient and effective way, which is the theme of this whole podcast. We're trying to learn music efficiently and effectively. And oftentimes what I used to do is I would sit down, I would pull up the chord chart, listen to the song, noodle around on my guitar, my piano until I had the right part. Five minutes later, I was done, and then the song was out of my brain so fast. So doing it this way, listening to the songs a lot while you're doing dishes or doing whatever helps really get them into your system. So once you've planned really well, the next step is to prepare. And this is kind of the obvious one, but I want to talk to you through some of the nuances of how I prepare specifically. Think about in the context of these these events coming up for me. I've got 40 songs where I'm not only playing an instrument, but I'm also the music director. And side note that may or may not be helpful in most... Most of all of these, I will also be what's considered the playback text. I'll be running our tracks, setting up our tracks. I'll be responsible for making our tracks are all congruent with our arrangements. So when I prepare, I think through three different categories. 
I think through hone or gear preparation. I think through music director preparation, and I think through instrument preparation. So let's talk through those one by one. So tone preparation is is kind of simple. It just means on the instrument that I'm playing, is there any sort of tone structuring I need to do to be prepared for the gig? A lot of my rigs, if you will, he's rig is linked on YouTube. I'll, I'll show it right here down below. A lot of my setups are made to be very flexible where I don't have to go make a guitar patch for every song or make brand new keys patches for every song. They're made to be where I can make them very flexible and I don't have to use a lot of time dialing in tones. But there are circumstances where you hear a certain guitar effect, you hear a certain piano sound where you're like, man, if I don't have that sound, everything will be ruined. <laughs> the, gig, the gig won't be good. It won't sound right. We're teaching a new song this weekend by Maverick City. And man, the piano sound was just beautiful. It was just dark upright it was like on the brink of being out of tune but it wasn't out of tune it was beautiful and i just thought man if i roll up in there with my typical super compressed verby worship piano thing it'll just ruin the song so i took a few extra minutes to dial in the right upright sound for that song and man it made all the difference step one of preparing is just do i have all the right tones that i need to accomplish this and i i do that first because i'm a i'm a tone person if it doesn't sound right to me i struggle to prepare to be honest not everybody's that way I mean, you do what works for you, but for me, it is an important step because I can practice with the right sound, if that makes sense. I was able to practice with that right piano sound, and I do think it influences the way you play. The next way I prepare is I prepare to MD. I do this before, before I prepare my instrument because usually in preparing to MD, I will learn some things about my instrument. So here's how I prepare to MD. I listen to songs a ton. I mean a ton. Like they're always on. We taught a new song to our church about six weeks ago called Take You At Your Word by Cody Carnes. And to this day, if I play that song, my four-year-old goes out of his way to tell me he hates that song. And he hates it because daddy listened to it so much. I listen to these songs so much because when I when I am D, they just they have to be second nature to me. There's really no other option. I have to be able to speak to it on the moment. So after I've listened to it a bunch, the other thing I'm really faithful to do is I, we use Planning Center at my church, and we also use Planning Center with my wedding and event band. Um, I go to an app called Music Stand that Planning Center has, and I pull the chord chart up, and I get my iPad out, and I get my Apple Pencil out, and I just mark that chart to death. I add drum dynamics. I highlight alternate chord progressions. I just I mark it to death, and I do that for a few reasons. One, I think it's important to say, I don't play with charts live hardly ever. So I'm not referencing this back again live. But something about physically writing it while I'm listening to the music, so I'm listening to the song and I'm writing it down, just helps seal it in my brain forever. Um, I, don't, I don't know why that is, but that's really, really helpful for me. I, I get the iPad, I write it out, and I, I think for me, it makes it, it makes it feel like I'm prepping an instrument because all I can do is listen and write. It helps me focus in on it. The other thing I really like is it does give me a quick reference point. So for instance, if it's Tuesday night and I'm preparing to MD an event on Sunday, there's a really good chance I have other gigs between then. And so before Sunday, I can go back and reference my notes and it helps me recall it really, really quickly. The other reason I like it is because it's digital. It's on this iPad and it's there forever for me. So I did a student event about a month ago and we pulled from a bunch of songs that I, I MD'd seven to eight months ago and haven't played since. And just by reviewing the notes I had made, I was able to really, really quickly recall everything I had learned or MD'd before. And I mean, I probably spent like five minutes per song and had it all back in memory. And by back in memory, I meant even the details of calling out really specific alternate chord progressions where like there was a song that had like a one over three, um, four, five progression. And the second time at one time in the song, it went one over three, four over six to five, things like that. I was able to memorize it, re-memorize it really quickly just because of the way I'd marked the char and it sparked it back in my memory. So when I prep to MD, I do a lot of listening. I mark charts up. And the third thing I do, sounds kind of embarrassing. This is totally true, though. I will practice MDing brand new songs in my car. 
especially if there's a lot of alternate chord progressions. We played a huge event last summer where we probably did 20 something songs and like 10 of them were Bethel songs. And Bethel does this awesome thing where it feels like the last bridge and the last chorus of every song, they come up with these amazingly cool, but different chord progressions. They're just different that you got to memorize and call out to your team. And if you're an MD, so I did, I mean, in my car, we're about to get to the bridge and I'm like four, one over three. And I'm like, crap, that's not a four. It's supposed to be a six or, you know, whatever. And so then I find that by the time I get to the gig, I'm just, I'm really prepared. When people ask me questions, I can spit it off really quick. There's a lot of preparation in it. And I want to encourage you, if you're new to being an MD, it probably will take significantly more preparation than you're expecting at first. But over time, you'll get a system that works for you, like I have here, and you'll be able to knock it out of the park. So when I prepare to MD, to kind of wrap all that up, I listen to the songs a lot. I mark up charts on my iPad, and then I re-listen to the songs in my car a lot. And if they're brand new songs, I will practice MDing them in the car. I practice making calls. I practice making bridges. And it's to do a couple things. It's to get used to the rhythm of the verbiage, because sometimes that's really hard. I remember having to practice the very last chorus in the song, Same God by Elevation Worship. Um, the last chorus starts on a one over three and then does this walk where it goes one, five over seven, six. And calling that chord progression out, that alternate progression, in a quick blurb that was clear, I mean, really took me work in the car to be able to say it very quickly. And the other reason I'm practicing it in the car is just to test myself, to see if I have it memorized as well as I think I do. So once I prepared my tones, I prepared to MD. The third thing I do is prepare my instrument. And I do this last because by the time I get to this point, I have the tones. I have the chord progression memorized already if I prepared to MD well. And I just have to learn the nuances of my instrument. Are there any hooks I need to know? Am I playing drums? Do I know the dynamics? Are there any really specific drum fills I need to hit note for note? If I'm playing bass... Um, I mean, similar are, do I know the rhythm the bass is playing? Are there any major runs or parts or riffs I need to know? Um, that's the detailed in the weeds work. And I, this all looks and has looked a lot more fluid than I'm describing it, but they are three fairly different phrases. I mean, today alone, I was dialing in some aux keys part for an event that's coming up. Um, I will learn to MD them later. I didn't really look at chord charts much. I just, I heard some of the main hooks, started dialing in the tones, and then I will learn the MD stuff. I'll mark the charts up. And then as we get closer to the event, I'll sit down and really hone in on my instrument. So once we've made a plan, once we've planned out how we're going to do things, we spend some good time preparing. And then after we prepare, we get to do the fun part. We get to perform. Um, and I don't mean that in the negative sense. If you're in the church world, don't turn this off right now. I just mean we get to go execute on the event. And this is the fun part. This is where we get to do um, what we've been preparing for. And here's my words on perform. I was thinking about what do I talk about this part? Do I say just go do it? I mean, do the thing. But no, I think it's, I think it's more than that. I think part of becoming a better music director was just helping instill confidence in my team. Oftentimes, I found that being a music director... I'm saying information everybody already knows. For the most part, everybody knows the chord progression. But me confidently calling out a chord progression instills confidence in the whole team. and Everybody just plays it so much better, so much stronger, and everybody just has more fun doing it. So here's my words of advice or wisdom or whatever on the performance piece. Be present. If you're like me and you have five events coming up this week, Whatever event you're at that night is the only time you get to do that event. So be present there with those people in that room and enjoy it and be present and have fun. Your whole team will feed off that energy of you not being distracted and you not being anxious about what's up ahead. Enjoy where you are. The second thing is to trust your preparation. You made a good plan. You spent time preparing. You've made notes. So when it comes time to call out that alternate chord progression, Don't say it with a shaky voice. That will make everybody unconfident. Say it with a really confident voice, and everybody will slam that alternate chord progression with so much energy. It'll have a great feel, and ultimately, it'll free everybody up to not be worried about things. So be present. Trust your prep. And the last one is not as cool, but it is. It is practical. Just take time to review your notes. (coughs) 
take time to review your notes. If you're feeling a little shaky, if the run through or the sound check, um, if the run through or the sound check felt a little safety, if the run through or the sound check felt a little a little tough, then just take a few moments, look at your iPad or look at the notes you took. And I'm, I'm telling you, it'll all come back to your memory almost instantly. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode, or the first episode of the MD School Podcast, where we help train musicians, worship leaders, and producers to be able to give their band direction. Please join us again next week for episode two.